Rafe Cosmology is an incredible course. When it comes to learning about the cosmological forces or our relationship with the totality, Ra did a bunch of courses he called gray courses. So not being able to really substantiate with the same kind of level of empirical evidence relative to being able to show people, hey, here, try this out, test it, try it and see. But what's really interesting about the 2027 courses is that there's a lot of opportunity that we now have relative to the time shifting. When Raw recorded this was back in 2006. Initially, this first Rave Cosmology 4, which is about the 2027 semester. And now we actually have things coming to the fore, as in things happening things shifting, things changing, things morphing, because it's time for a new cycle. So we're going to look at a whole process and what that is going to bring relative to being a part of this new cycle, to be a part of the global background frequency, which really is, relatively speaking, to what we are here to do, my friends. We are the Maya, each one of us a little tiny fragment, a speck of stardust animated in form, breathed into life. And we're going to look at a very detailed way that the nature of our cyclical process, our developmental process as human beings, comes to the richness of a lived experience. So it's one of the, we'll say, least practical as far as Plutonic history, but relative to you now here being with me and studying human design. If you're a geek like me, you're in the right place. This is going to bring a fascinating richness and a depth of truth because I'm going to give you a secret key for you to be able to connect up with this particular time of all of our lives, which is very exciting. It only happens once every a little over 400 years that we enter into a new cycle. And guess what? It's actually having an effect on us, this societal structure in April. Everybody's saying, oh, 2027, that's when everything's going to yell. Yeah, but the first entry point of Pluto into gate 41, our start codon in our genetics actually happens in April. So we're going to take a look at uh, a chart. I ran a chart of somebody, whoever is going to be born at right when the clock strikes, you know, midnight in Sedona, Arizona on April 12th. And we're going to keynote what that particular child born into the world is going to do for his life's work or her life's purpose or they in this time and age. So if you're enjoying the materials, I warmly invite you to subscribe to wherever you find this information or investigate deeper, jovianarchive.com, ihdsschool.com. Those are the official source places, and you can verify that your professional has been certified on the ihdsschool.com forward slash professionals. Okay, now we're going to get into a quote from Raw. He says, the nature of the rave is what we're going to discover in 2027. So, and at the same time, the consequences of the transformation of the evolution that's going to take place, the consequences of what is going to bring us and what it's going to mean to us. So a lot of the quotes that I'm going to use today are going to be from semester four, the nature and mechanics of the rave. Now, Nature and Mechanics of the Rave actually happens to be 11 different classes. You're in the Plutonian Interregnum. And I'll give you more information about where to find further detail. There's a whole five-hour course, actually, on this particular topic. So it's more of an introductory lecture. And the first step about understanding the Plutonic Interregnum is actually to study, surprise, surprise, Pluto, the magic and the influence of Pluto. Pluto standing for truth, transformation, and psychology in our human design system. So in 1781, most of you who have studied human design, you know, there was a tremendous shift where we went from a person, a human being, 
who was born with seven chakras. The Hindu Brahmin chakra system is a study of that. And we shifted into a new kind of transitional human being. Did you know that you and I are actually not what we would consider to be human? If we were to take one of us and put us back before 1781, we would be a, a fish out of water. We'd be tremendously uncomfortable because they were not like us. So this nine-centered human being that we are right now, we're still mutating. We're still processing. We're still digesting and we're still evolving. We're in the evolutionary process. Ra would call us um, homo sapiens in transitus. That's what he landed on, homo sapiens in transitus, because we aren't fully developed as that nine-centered human being. Seven-centered, when we begin at the beginning, would be 90,000 years ago. But in 1781, this seven-centered creature chakra, we'll say, use the right terms for back then. Now we have this shift into the nine. And the nine is an incredibly important number to contemplate. See on the right-hand side, we have our rave body graph. And this is something that was never seen before. Ra Ruhu put pen to paper and drew it out and put all of that information out into the world to be known as the human design system. He was actually given the design of forms. And so we're looking at an evolutionary shift or a change, each of us morphing into something even now as we speak. Mutation requires heat. The energy within us, have you noticed that the solar flares much more intense? Mutation requires heat. It's not just our planet that's warming. The entire solar system is warming. So mutation requiring heat as well as a an explosion of a lot of different kinds of substances that we put into our body, food, that enhances the mutation, as well as food is information, and information is food. So it's really critical right here and now, this system, we're talking about the human design system. Ra was given the design of form. He called it human design because it was more practical. But now we're going into this change, this shift, and this morphing from what we were way long time ago. And now you can see we are Homo sapiens in transitus beyond 1781, about 100 years after that shift, the seven centered being died out. And yet you and I, we still have an ability to um, have this mutative energy that allows for us to develop the self-reflected consciousness into something even more, even further. So when you're looking at the slide that I'm showing you, you see the three and then the five and then the seven. Okay, that's the evolutionary shift. And something to realize about this is that it takes eons. It takes a long time, really long time. So our little lives that are maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, if we're lucky, we get to be in centurions. It's just a microscopic moment, a flash in time. And all of us who are alive right now happen to have a seven-centered hangover, we'll call it, because the seven was what we were. And there are all of our religions, our rules, and our rights and wrongs were all created by a being that is no longer here. And yet our minds are still very much caught up in the strategic game of survival through mind rather than the embodiment of the form. Now, in human design, which is, again, the design of forms, we have a five-centered design at night. This is the dream rave design. So this is one of the deepest areas of conditioning that leads you to be stuck in the program, the transiting field that leads you to not honor the integrity of what you actually are, in your daytime waking reality. And one of the reasons why primary health system and human design is so important is that it helps to um, address some of the conditioning that you get when you're sleeping, when you're dreaming at night. So just to let you know that 
the Homo sapiens, now we call us intransitus, when we're looking at a seven-centered being, we're simply seeing the energy that is driving everything up to the head center. And that was what it was for 90,000 years. The energy no longer does that same thing. What the energy does is it also moves between other centers, particularly from the Ajna, you can see it here at the third eye, over to this newer developing awareness function we call the solar plexus. So it's over here on the right-hand side. You see this, uh, it, in this design here, we have it reversed, the colors are reversed. So in this particular design, this person would have it white. So whether it's white or whether it's colored in brown in your design, that inward pointing triangle on the right-hand side is your solar plexus. And that right there has a back and forth energy, just gonna grab my drawing tool here, back and forth energy between Ajna and solar plexus. This back and forth energy between Ajna and solar plexus is helping to further the mutation of the solar plexus. So solar plexus is what is currently mutating. And that's the reason why so many people are so emotionally volatile or up and down. There's a lot of energy being pushed over to the solar plexus. The root is trying to stabilize the solar plexus. While at the same time, there's energy mutation within each of our individual bodies as we are here right now being mutated as well as every single child that is being born moving forward, particularly as we see when Pluto enters into gate 41, the start codon of our genetic potentials. And that's happening April 12th in 2024. So there is this essence of singularity in the seven centered construct, everybody looking for, we are one, you know, the oneness trying to evolve and find bliss outside of the form. But the nine centered homo sapien and transitus is here to embody form and to have the form run the show, not the mind. This is the time and space, this time and age and era where we as individuals can have our unique sovereign individuality and not be beholden to the old seven-centered model or construct of belief systems and religions and all of those things. So the seven-centered construct, again, homo sapiens, we are not really human, we're in transitus. We're in transitus to something different. In our society, we consider um, difference to be wrong or bad. And as we move forward in 2027 and beyond, when the mutation really is able to give itself roots and start to flower, it's going to take centuries for the new kind of human to come into the fore. If you've ever heard of a rave baby, that is going to take a lot to get to the place where we have a lot of them to consider them to be a viable, separate kind of human being. So when we look at the seven-centered religions in the past, they are not going to have any connection to that. We still do. You know, we still do as human beings. We have the morality of right, wrong, good, bad. Really, in human design, if you study it, you just see it as a this and a that. You know, there is a place for a lot of different variety or difference because this is the science of differentiation and here's where we study it. Finding oneness, as in oneness with the greater all that is or totality from not inside the body, but outside the body was the aim and goal that people had. When we look at a basic body graph and you split apart the chart and you see the conscious personality and you see the unconscious design, you'll notice that they're very different. We are a binary construct now with this human design body graph. You can start to read that map and understand how you are here to be able to be unique and different. So strategic was the way, seven-centered way for 90,000 years. Everybody, their mental processing, very strategic, focused on what you could see, what you could smell, what you could taste. So it was very strategic as far as its cognitive potential. 
But now what we're looking at, instead of this energy, everything moving up to develop ajna or self-reflected consciousness, if you look over to this homo sapiens in transitus body graph, now we have a very different construct. And the reason why the body graph looks the way that it does is because there's a lot more let's call them neuronal networks. There's a lot more relational dynamics channels between these centers that are having a fixed relationship with other centers. So one of the questions that came in just now through um, Instagram is, why is the spleen over there? It's on the wrong side of the body. Paraphrasing. It's because we need to have that split off for you to see the older area of the body graph, the construct that used to go right straight up the middle. We had to split it off in order to show you the relationship between the new solar plexus center and to be able to have the relational dynamic of those channels be easy to read. Okay, now the splenic center, it's a center. It's not just the splenic organ, the spleen organ. It includes the entire immune system. So in reality, if I were to show you where's the spleen awareness at, it's in your entire body. The entire, um, all of these tiny little um, things inside of your bones, you know, the marrow, not just the lymphatic system and all of the lymph. So you see... That is the reason why. So we could see the mirroring effect of having a fear for survival and a fear or a nervousness about one's emotional and social relational context. That's the solar plexus. So I'm going to read a few things from Ra here because I really want to make sure that you're very clear about things. As far as I can tell, he says, one in 1781, Homo sapiens came to an end. That's clear to me. And I would call this form now Homo sapiens in transitus. In the beginning when he recorded it, it was interregnum. He wasn't really clear yet. But now we call it in transitus because that's what he landed on. Because it's neither this Homo sapiens nor the new rave form that is going to be evolving in 2027 and beyond. Now, it's no longer human in the traditional sense of what human is, it, meaning us, meaning we, meaning you and I. Yet, it is not fully what it can be. What is it? It is intended to house. After all, this is a medium for the transition of life's direction in terms of the evolution of humanity. Okay, so strategic seven-centered religions, the morality of right and wrong, finding oneness, everything about our life is borrowed from that seven-centered homogenized construct. It's not us. And from the perspective of this homo sapien in transitus, to free ourselves from getting away from the power of the mind, we have something very simple, very easy. The ability to have a strategy and an authority and our deeper layers of our, for those of you who are projected particularly, for those of you who are studying psychology, our motivational frequency, it really is the thing that protects us as projectors. So this is a different form. It's not about mind, not anymore. It's about solar plexus awareness, emotional intelligence. So in this slide deck, you're going to see a lot of things that show us why it's so difficult for human beings to have this um, <laughs> coming to truth moment because they're stuck in that seven-centered model. It offers us something new, the possibility to awaken and to be correct by being able to follow the body and not letting your mind run the show. So here on this slide, you see the difference again between a design and a personality. In the body graph, it's something really extraordinary, something that's allowing us to experience the truth of who we are. Remember, Pluto is truth, transformation, and psychology. We're going to talk about the interregnum. This doorway to the dualistic nature of what we are can be found if you start to study the human design system. 
And so this plutonic interregnum, as we move closer and closer to 2027, there are changes that are taking place in their very form, in our physical form, our body. The mechanism of what is going to change us is Pluto. So I got one of these books, uh, an ephemeris for 2021 to 2050. And you can see within it on page, let's see, is there a page here? There's no page. It's just listed by years and by month. So if I go to April, 2024, and I go down to the 12th day, you can see right over here that we have the 41st gate. That means that Pluto is entering into our start codon in April. And so this plutonic interregnum is going to be part of the process of what is closing down the old style of living and being and entering us into ushering in a new era where we're going to have a new way of being, a new cycle that is going to bring a totally radical, shocking shift. Changes are afoot, and it may be stressful and uncomfortable, but so long as you have your decision-making strategy, you should be able to weather the weather, no matter whatever happens. Now, this is 1930 is when Pluto actually came to our awareness. I happen to live below Flagstaff in Sedona, Arizona, and Flagstaff is about 7,000 feet up in the air, a city, where that's where they actually discovered Pluto, where Pluto was discovered. It's not there, but from there, they saw Pluto. Okay, so you can see Pluto on this slide right here, way out there. And we have a person who discovered it, Ombog, and he was the discoverer of Pluto. So in this solar system, you can see we have inner planets. We have what are considered to be our outer planets, Jupiter being a failed star, and Jupiter creating some of the energy that is there within our solar system in the form of neutrinos. So it creates its own number of neutrinos. And now we're going to take a look at what are considered to be uh, dwarf planets. Okay, so dwarf planets and Pluto being one of them. So it's a dwarf planet in the Kuiper belt, a ring of bodies beyond the orbit of Neptune. It's the ninth largest and the tenth most massive known object to directly orbit the sun. That's from Wikipedia. Okay, and so you can see dwarf planets. We also have Eris and Sedna here on the screen. So Pluto, the discovery of Pluto was in 1930 and the demotion, 2006. Remember how Ra recorded this in 2006? So when he recorded it, it was thrown out. And now we still consider it to be a dwarf planet. You know, So as you watch Pluto in this animated slide move around the mandala wheel, you're watching how it moved through each gate. It turns something off and then it turns something on when it goes through a gate. So there's the 1930 discovery of Pluto to 2006 and the demotion of Pluto. So relative to every step that Pluto takes, it opens up something in our genetics to be able to have us mutate into a fully nine-centered, fully embodied, fully aware human creature, the rave, as Ra would call it. Because again, remember, we are a transitional form. So this is where you saw Pluto fly into where the gate is now in 1781, the discovery of Uranus. That is when we actually had Pluto going into the 41st gate. So I wonder what kind of discoveries we might encounter as Pluto again moves into the 41st gate. We can already look around and see how different our reality is um, 1781 began the industrial age. And as we're moving forward, we could think of it as the information age because of look at our technologies. AI is an example, internet as an example. The ability for us to evolve as a species, again, as I mentioned, because we have a diversity of not only food, but information to take in, and the increasing of the heat of our solar system, the sun, 
giving off more heat, um, all of the planets warming up, including our Earth, that facilitates our energy body and our physicality to mutate. Heat mutation requires heat. Heat facilitates mutation. So for those of you who are joining on Instagram, if you want to see the slides, please go over to the YouTube page, Human Design System, and you'll be able to find the slides that I'm sharing as well. All right, so the discovery of Uranus. This is an experiential way where we have the 41st gate. I happen to have my son at the home, the center of the uh, human experiential way, the 30th, my personality son. So the seven centered process of the human experiential way, the fate, you know, handling fate, dealing with fate, was very much a part of this process of evolutionary involvement or the development of our imagination into new experiences. So here with Pluto and the initiating or start codon, you can see again that it's going to be moving into that very soon, just briefly, and then it will retrograde back out. But the first of the children who are going to be born with this new um, initiative, you could say, because that actually is happens to be one of the channels that is activated during that particular day, April 12th, 2024. And so this vast plutonic cycle that we all find ourselves caught up in the wheel of, the ability for us to have this evolutionary process, it, we stand on the cusp of a very exciting time. It can be very uncomfortable to face so many changes so quickly. So that's again why I say take a deep breath, come back home to you and yourself. In 2027, as you see, the Ides of February, it actually happens to be on my birthday, that Ra declared the complete cycle is going to be finished. When we have, I'm going to go back to that slide here, uh, right here, and we have Pluto, the unconscious Plutos of those who are born at that time in the 41st gate, line two, and the conscious Pluto in 41, line five. If you've studied the hexagrams of the Rave I Ching, you know that the first line is the start or the foundation of a process. The fifth line is the furthest differentiation of that hexagram's process. So when the Pluto, conscious Pluto for this human being goes into that area of the body graph, this is when we have the uniqueness of the ability for this plutonic interregnum to be complete and to see the new rave babies being born that have embodied that mutation. So again, the Ides of February, February 15th, 2027. So this discovery of Uranus 1781, all the way up to 2027, you can see putting it all together, the channel of struggle, design of stubbornness, the channel of mating, a design focused on reproduction, the channel of inspiration, a design of a creative role model. And then if we put them all together to keynote this as one thing, we're looking at the struggle to create a new model. Now, if you look at this graph, on my slides, you're gonna notice how many people are actually in the world. See at the end of the World War II, we had that baby boom. Now you see how many people, we're up at 8 billion now, a lot less people 400 plus years ago than we have now. Mutation also requires diversity. And so relative to us being able to birth a new kind of human, you're going to find that after that particular mm, evolutionary process, the human species is actually going to be on the decline. You can already hear about it in many different countries where they're co continually worried about their young people moving and not coming back and the birth rate being so low. So no choice. It is what it is. But it is part of what is the struggle to create a new model in order that we create or birth the rave babies. So this homo sapien in transitus, when you look at this 2027 now, here is the rave circuitry, or another way you could say it is the autive circuit. We as a species 
are not going to have the same kind of vital survival force because of the breakdown of one of those channels, synthesis and design of sen sensitivity. And it's one of the reasons why PHS is so important, primary health system for those of you who are new. When you're looking at this slide, you can see relative to what I've got over on the left-hand side, the design sun, earth, and the nodes. That's where we find the control panel for our primary health system. And following your primary health system is what is going to allow you, if it's right for you, when it's correct for you to experiment with this, it's going to allow you to let go of some of that really crusty old conditioning, the challenges that you're faced with because you believe the amplification and the distortion of your mind's process with a body that's really stressed out. So at the end of a seven-year cycle of deconditioning in human design, you literally end up with a body that's more relaxed. Ross promised to you that you will also see with a, his guarantee your motivational frequency without any question. It's one of the clear ways that we know relative to facilitating the awakening of a human creature to give them tools to experiment with in order to help us survive with awareness, with correctness in this coming future. There's a lot of chaos in our human construct right now. And a lot of that is going to start to fall away, thank God heavens, that we no longer will be having the design of what Ra calls killer monkeys. Not that we won't still have uh, issues or challenges or problems related to that. It takes a while for, you know, the people who were born before 2027 to die off unless we have some kind of catastrophic event, obviously. So again, here's the Homo sapien and transitus on one side of your screen, and you can see the rave design on the other. So I'm going to read another quote from Ra because I want to make sure that I'm getting this across to you in his words. I'm just a messenger, him being the primary messenger, wanting to pass that on cleanly to you. He says, quote, when 2027 comes, there are two things to deal with. We have to deal with our own possibilities in being able to close the door correctly as a species. And at the same time, our responsibility to an altruistic sacrifice in which we nurture the emergence of those that are intended to replace us. So it can sound kind of scary. Replace us? What do you mean? Remember, if you listened from the very beginning, that we are a homo sapiens, a human in transitus. It's going to take centuries for the rave babies to be able to build up a populace to where they're probably publicly acknowledged as something separate and not something that is um, damaged. Unfortunately, a lot of the babies in third world countries will be exposed because they won't necessarily have the capability of um, being able to care for these babies. In our areas of the world, they'll probably be institutionalized. And so because they are designed to behave as a oneness within a three to five person construct, as an aware small group within that unified awareness of the group being one thing, to have you as an individual stand on your own, sovereign in your own authority, is going to be something that isn't the same for these rave children. The rave children will find their wholeness within their group, their group of like kind. So that's what he means by the thing that is replacing us, the evolvement of this human species. I know it sounds very science fiction. We'll see, huh? Nothing to do but wait and see. The current um, people on the spectrum of autism are he would say failed mutation, just that the form isn't ready for the fullest embodiment quite yet. There are a lot of benefits to being on the spectrum. Happened to be previously diagnosed on the spectrum. Haven't gone since um, 10 years, you know, as far as being in a deconditioning, fully immersed in the human design experiment. So what Ra is calling this um, industrialized age at the very end is the age of innovation, 
from 1930 when Pluto was discovered to 2006 when he recorded this. It's a very special time. I feel really pleased to be able to be a part of it. So, okay, so now we're going to look at the keynote, a body graph, to talk about this time or this era as far as what it is. So we have the channel of discovery, a design of succeeding where others fail, failing where others succeed. Channel of maturation, a design of balanced and cyclical development. We also have the channel of acceptance, a design of an organizational being. And the channel of transitoriness, a design of a jack of all trades. In addition, that channel of synthesis, the one that's currently being choked off or squeezed because of the mutation, that's a design of being sensitive. So this is going to be what we're going to keynote now as far as this particular time in life. So if you look at this body graph, we could keynote it as to succeed or fail in a cycle of organizing transitory synthesis. That's what those decades were all about. And we're currently entering into a new era. In 1987, there was more to do with the, um, if you remember or recall, uh, Ra's encounter with the voice. And a lot of different people actually had mystical experience as well. But he was the one that took the human design system and put it out into the world over the rest of his life. So I'm going to, again, read a little tiny bit from him. He says, we see and appreciate the nature of human design as the most extraordinary thing about design is that this is an incredible synthesis. It's a Maya absolute synthesis of just about every this and that that you can imagine. The esoteric, the exoteric, and from every tradition, from every point of view, it's all somehow put together into this synthetic construct. This body graph, one of the reasons why I love studying it so much and exploring it with my students. So there's the channel of synthesis again. 1949, a design of being sensitive. This is the one that is currently getting shut down because of the mutation. 49 and 55 are actually both part of the mutation as well as the 59. And so when we look at the fatal dysfunction of this channel, as in the end or the death of this channel, if we think about what it fuels, it fuels the mystical way. So that means no more pressure to be in the marriage contract or bond. No more pressure for contracts, really. Or the giant schools and governmental structures that were built in the last era, you know, in our uh, time of the cross of planning, that fuel is actually shutting down. So the thing that supported us in the last 400 years will not support us as we move into the future once this channel shuts down because there will be no fuel for it. There will be no energy for it. So it's something to understand another reason besides the fact that the background um, era is shifting to Cross of the Sleeping Phoenix, the era of uh, the individual. It's also because the fuel for that channel and an entire stream, the mystical way, is going to be shut down. So it's a very interesting dynamic of it not being able to function relative to this time of our lives. You can already kind of see that with some people. You know, it's part of that uh, autive circuit. In the autives there or raves, there will not be a channel there. So it is something to understand and can be studied in rave cosmology. So here's the doorway of 2027. Again, opening up to that doorway is about becoming aware of your individual nature, your individuality. It's something to see such an incredible time to be alive. So I'm going to fly Pluto back in right now because there's a deep, deep key for you. If you want to understand your personal connection to this new era, go look at your Pluto, literally, in your design. What are your Plutos? Mine happen to be in form magic, 48.5 on both sides. So providing solutions after 
testing and validating what is actually going to help us develop talent in this life. It's part of my nature and gift. Pluto is a an activation in your design that takes a lifetime to explore. It is not something that can be grasped in a moment. It's deep. It's profound. You know, if it's undefined in an undefined center in your design, mine happens to be in the splenic center or survival instincts, pattern recognition, intuition. Whenever there is a, a definition brought to that particular function, center, wherever your Pluto is, this is where you are facing your deepest fears. And also, again, what Ra is giving us as a key is to look at your Pluto as your connection to this transformation, to connect to this different time and era. What are you bringing? Pluto is the instrument of transformation. And each one of us, I like to think of them as little gods because they are, they are, you know, in the sky, you know, I wish you would move. No, you can't because you can't change your design. But this is the Pluto, death and rebirth, the instrument of transformation. If you are on my fractal, and you are if you're listening to my voice, then I encourage you to take a step back from the day-to-day -day extreme fear that we are living under and to get right with you because it's really critical and key that you align to your sovereignty at this time. You cannot rely on the government, on your parents, on anybody to take care of you because it's only up to you now. And so relative to the empowered awareness of self, it is my desire that you entrain yourself to the new era, which is self-empowerment, to let go of any crutches that uh, you believe will save you because the only thing that you can trust is inside of you. I'm going to read another quote from Ra. He says, those of us in this form at this time who have the fractal have the most extraordinary privilege of all. It is to be able to finally and simply just be in the experience of life. To be free of the pressure of fear and survival, the lack of of love and pain. There is only the correctness of our form. It is a beauty that is there for everyone, that fruit now. And there is no other answer. It is the only thing that will carry us into the future. You are the only thing that you can trust. So on your slide, you're seeing the material that we sourced into to create this beautiful presentation. Rave Cosmology for the 2027 semester can be bought at jovianarchive.com. Closing the door on the nine-centered being is the name of the actual title. And I promised you at the beginning of this that we were going to take a look at a chart this is the first chart I could run in Sedona, Arizona, where there is a child that will be born, if there is a child that would be anywhere around this area. And you can see if we were to keynote what this particular child projector, here to advise and guide, projectors are the advisors who can guide, you can see that it is a martyr heretic, a right angle cross of Maya, meaning their personal destiny is to empower the initiation of the perfected form to guide the organization in a logical way. Or it could be to recognize the initiation of going first into a new way of being relative to the certainty of providing the ability to organize and accept the logical patterns perfecting the form into the new maya with their deepest most transformational mental truth being about the ability to have the pressure to dream a new dream a new maya that's all we're entering into it doesn't have to be scary but we do have to come to this ability to accept ourselves and our embrace and enhance our sovereign nature by allowing for uniqueness and difference on this planet. 
you are the only one who can do that because it's not about anybody outside of you trying to get them to accept you. It is about you accepting yourself first, and then there no, needs to be no argument or no desperately trying to prove that you deserve a seat at the table. You are valuable and priceless because you exist, and you're the only one that can love you. Love has to come from within before it is expressed from without. It is my pleasure and honor to serve you, my friends. If you're interested in learning more about this particular time and space, if you want to enter into the experiment, if you want to learn how to keynote, as we have just shown, perfected form, initiation, acceptance, what do these mean? Design of survival, needing to be first, organizational being. It's to organize and guide the initiation of perfecting form into a new maya that some of us are going to be imprinted with. What if you have a cycle during that time? What if that's your birthday? What if this is your um, 30s, 40s, 50s? We all carry within us a multi-dimensional reality and being. You are not just that imprint, those digits on a screen. You are so much more. I encourage you to experiment and see what it's like for you to be the highest expression of your being. So to continue the conversation, if you want to go deeper than to the Plutonic Interregnum, I highly recommend that you check out this five-hour audio course with Ra Uruhu. It's for sale at jovianarchive.com. Again, my name is Lavina Archers. You can find me at lavina at ihgsschool.com, as well as lavina at bg5businessinstitute.com, where I'm a faculty teacher at both of our official organizations that are responsible for upholding the original human design knowledge as it was given to us by Ra Uruhu. Thanks so much. Bye for now.